Hello everybody, and yes again guys, today we're doing another giveaway, 150 XRP if we hit 750 likes within 24 hours. You'll hear the winners today if we hit that number, so make sure you press the like button, subscribe, and comment down below your favorite crypto. And today, we're going to be talking about interest rates, we're going to be talking about the economy, we're going to be talking about the crisis, we're going to be talking about retirement, because it has been a huge day with some... Uh, definitely some crazy stuff happening and going on so guys if you're interested in that make sure you keep watching as it's going to be a very interesting episode now first of all i got to give you guys a little bit of a look at what interest rates really are well no i got to look at what negative interest rates really are and low interest rates well with negative interest rates banks charge you interest to keep cash with them rather than paying you interest Negative interest rates might be seen during deflationary periods when people or institutions are inclined to hoard money rather than spend or lend it. The negative interest rate is meant to be an incentive for banks to make loans during a period in which they would rather hang on to funds. So I hope you guys can already see a little bit of the connection to XRP here. Why? I'll explain in a second. But first, let's dive a little bit deeper into the definition here and how I see this connecting to the rest of what we've been talking about for the last couple of days. So when do you see negative interest rates? Well, you see them mostly during deflationary periods. Now we've already discussed here that deflationary periods, yeah, that's not gonna be happening. We're most likely expecting some really, really heavy inflation. However, they're saying here when people or institutions are inclined to hoard money, which is also really not the case as once more, why would institutions or, or them wanna hoard money? Right now they're really, really investing it heavily into other things like, for example, gold and other assets to still make money. On the contrary, yes, they are hoarding money. They're not really spending it as much. And it's a little bit of a strange situation surrounding that because during a lot of crisis, you would think, all right, people are not going to be spending. People are not going to be doing that. But since there's also a lot of printing and people get so much free money, they're also inclined to just keep spending it and also really not having to hoard it so much. And same for these institutions, since they're getting the support, they can still keep innovating. You know, they can still keep going on. So they're still spending, they're still lending, they're not really hoarding all of it anymore, uh, maybe the first you know, little period. The negative interest rate is meant to be an incentive for banks to make loans during a period in which they would rather hang on to funds. Again, another very situational one or very crazy situation one, as right now banks really have not that much to say as it's all by the Fed, right, in the U.S. and I guess for different countries, it's all already arranged from above. They can't really rule too much or do too much as, well, they're being funded like crazy right now. But all right, having that in the back of our head, let's guess, guys, where am I right now? I told you guys already where I am, but you got to, again, put it down in the comment section below. I am over here in Zurich right now. And I told you guys the reason, right? Why am I here? Well, let's take a little bit of a look right here. Here is the interest rates in every country, tradingeconomics.com. One of the things you can see here is Switzerland is minus 0.75. Why is that so? Why is that going on? While most of these European countries all have zero, and right now the United States is also talking about keeping it low or even at zero. Uh, I don't really know exactly what they're going to go for, either zero or 0 0.25, uh, as you can see here. The Federal Reserve left the target range for its federal funds rate unchanged at zero to 0 to 0.25% on July 29th, 2020, as expected. Policymakers reiterated that the Fed is committed to using its full range of tools to support the U.S. economy and repeated the CV pandemic poses considerable risk to the economic outlook over the medium term. The federal funds rate will remain near zero until the economy has weathered recent events and is on track to achieve its maximum employment and price stability goals. Policymakers also pledge to maintain the bond purchases and the array of lending and liquidity programs, at least at the current pace. And by the way, this one, that they maintain the bond purchases and all of that, is actually very important for the bigger picture here, as I explained earlier, where if they were to stop it or were to deteriorate, your whole economy would fall or collapse even earlier. Meanwhile, the central bank announced the extension of its dollar liquidity swap lines and the temporary repurchase agreement facility for foreign and international monetary authorities through March 31st, 2021. Right, but as you can see at the bottom here, dates 1971 and 1920, all the way down 0 0.25. However, right now it might go to zero. And now why is that you might be asking? Well, the main reason I would say is that every time there's a recession or something like that going on, and we can actually see it right here, they lower interest rates. And this is in every country. This is a macroeconomic concept when lowering your interest rates 
stimulates people lending, stim- or institutions lending, stimulates them investing and just building stuff, right? Which again is supposed to increase the whole whole cir- the circle, I guess, just increase everything really. However, everything changes when you get to zero for a longer time or below zero because yeah, because of a lot of reasons, actually, let's not get too far into that. Just trust me on this one. And also, it changes once more if the whole world were to have either a zero or a minus or so negative interest rate. But that's, again, a story for another day that I've explained partially. But it would change the game, and it's very, 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 very strange and very speculational. What happens now, though, is that normally they're going to be pushing this interest rate down if a crisis occurs, right? Because you want to stimulate the economy again. However, right now, there's a lot of macroeconomists and people just really that I talk to debating on whether or not the crisis has already come and already been over, right? For stocks, it looks like it's already been over and all of that. And I guess this, the chart here for fund rate, also kind of looks the same because while they dropped it all the way to where it can, they can't really put it any lower to incentivize people to uh, invest. And thus, really, at this point, we're at the bare bottom. But what happens now if there comes another bigger crisis or even something worse? And... It's really kind of funny because thinking about it like here, it will be very, very bad for the US if the crash were to go even further or if the crash were to come on because there's really not much to do. However, and again, that's why a lot of you guys came here. I find it really, really interesting to see how it affects negative interest rates because normally once they're negative, it's really hard to get them up. That's one thing. But also if the economy is doing bad, you can't lower them anymore because that has no effect. Again, trust me on that one already now. If you're negative or you're already having a negative interest rate, it doesn't work. However, as I just said, the crisis is going to be really, really bad for the U.S., really, really bad for everything around that. However, it will be very, very positive for things like gold, things like crypto, and let's see. Why C has been the best crisis for gold, right? I guess you can already understand why it's been one of the best crises for gold, because gold went to an all-time high. Gold did crazy, just ridiculously crazy. But actually, fun fact, if you check when it all began, it began the 31st of December 2019. And looking at that on the XRP chart, it's fun to see once more that from that point on forward, let me quickly see exactly where it is, right here, the 31st of December, all the way for the next 46 days till the 15th of February of 2020, it had been consecutively going up for about 84% or so just after the announcement of, you know, our, 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 big, uh, our big friend here or enemy. It depends on how you look at it. And I don't know how much gold did. You can look it up for a split second if you want to. Let's type in gold. Let's check. So we got a check here from December 2009 or 2019 right here. Let's actually press shift to get this thing going on here about. Let's see where, where is December 31st. Right here, this one right here, all the way till actually a little shorter. Here it been going on for oh no, 48 days as well, right? 48 days, and it took about 12%. Then after the crash, it went from here to about where we are at right now, which is roughly let's see here. 36% once more. Yeah. All right, those numbers become a lot better for silver when you start to look at it. But the point that I'm trying to make is clear here. This crisis, which did a lot of bad things for a lot of stocks and even for gold and all of that in in the end, it did very, 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 very well for our crypto and our gold and our our safe havens. You know, the things that we don't normally invest in, but we invest in as a kind of a counter against normal stocks and all of that. And that's really the truth, guys. I told you why a lot of billionaires and whales are buying into crypto right now. First of all, because it's been legalized. I mean, the framework is getting better and better and better piece by piece. They're not that afraid anymore of it all. Uh, they're making sure that the system is ready for the ultimate deployment. And with ultimate deployment, I mean everybody hopping on, banks really buying into cryptocurrency a lot, institutional investors just seeing it as normal and all of that. At this point, we're not really there yet, but we're getting there. You know, we're really, really getting there. And this is all just small pieces towards the end goal. I'm just guessing here that global QE, right, eventually all that that's been happening right now will switch over, right? It will switch over where it's like, the QE can't go on forever, all right? Right now, here they're saying global QE asset purchases to reach $6 trillion in 2020. You know how much that is, guys? From the whole 2009 to 2018 period, they they had about double this. So $6 trillion is a staggering amount that is equal to more than half the cumulative global QE total seen over 2009 to 2018, said Robert Sierra, director in fintechs or Fitch's economics team. 
So thinking about that, just understand how much this QE is doing. And this is only in asset purchases, by the way. Think about that for a split second. I think with all of this that we have right now is that if a crisis were to be coming once more, they don't really have anywhere to go. I mean, people are already so doubtful. People are already so, and I mean, it's not its not getting better. It's getting crazier, right? Earlier today we saw, or yesterday, we saw Heels, which is supposedly going to pump in another $1 trillion. We also have Donald Trump who said, yeah, I want that. I'm happy because I want to help people. But here's another article. Double your PPP loan, automatic forgiveness under $150,000 and more. And again, the whole article is just crazy. Monday, Senators Marco Rubio and Susan Collins released a 92-page proposal bill for an act that will be called the Continuing Small Business Recovery and Paycheck Protection Program Act. The act is intended to correct some problems and a number of challenges that PPP borrowers have had while opening new opportunities for many borrowers who are not treated as well as others under this program. There is something in this new act for almost everyone, and below we summarize the primary provisions. Well, again, you can check it out if you want to deeply, deeply into it. However, the point I'm trying to make here is that the QE is not at an end, all right? People are not trying to get rid of QE or people are not trying to stop it all of a sudden. It's going on. It's going on very, very hard. The point is, I'm thinking at one point here, people are not going to be buying it anymore and the U.S. is going to fall. You know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm not, I don't want to say it too out loud here. Just a little bit, a little co couple of hints as to why I think it's happening. And if it does fall a little bit more, you know, in, in the economy... There's no way to save it. At least they'll say, the way to save it is going to be really, really difficult. And that's why I'm right now in Switzerland to explore with one of the bankers that I've uh, spoken to, one of my old friends, to kind of explain to me once more why the negative interest rate is working so well here and how the connection will be and what he thinks about the, the world and negative interest rates and what would happen if the U.S. were to go for that. I think it's all going to fall a little bit piece by piece and it's going to be ridiculously positive for cryptocurrency specifically. And also one thing you should consider here is that if banks are going to be doing what we think, they're going to be under so much stress where any liquidity that they can get, any provider like XRP is just going to be so ridiculously huge. They'll be, they'll be waiting in line to hop onto such a partnership. You just wait, you'll see the true value. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Honestly speaking here, I don't know if the true $10,000 per coin value that they often like to talk about is really real and is something that's going to be happening. What I do know, though, for almost a fact is that, first of all, if a bigger crisis were to come, XRP would come out on top. If a bigger crisis were to come in the bank sector, Ripple would come out on top out of all of this. And if the big sector were to fall all the way, the banks were to just fall, the banks were to prosper, it doesn't really matter. Ripple and XRP are going to be coming out on top because they're just useful for really both these sides. Even if the banks were all the way wiped out, XRP is going to be useful because they've changed their priorities from going for these bigger guys to SMEs as well, right? E-commerce payments and all of that, which you will still have even if banks were to be kind of faded out to a certain degree and kind of become obsolete. Even with cash payments, guys, you know that you got to switch over your dollars that you have in cash to something else. And even with a golden standard, you still want to maybe switch your gold to silver or something like that, which you might use XRP for. All right, guys, but that was it for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I would definitely see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody, and have a very, very nice day.